Verizon Channel 24 and by filing such notice with the Township Clerk. The meeting was scheduled for today, Tuesday, uh, January 14, 2014. The Board will take formal action on payment of bills on today, Tuesday, January 14, 2010. The Overage Township Board of Education acknowledges that the law of this day establishes that board members of the public, that members of the public, including members of the board, have the right to record public board meetings using audio or video recording devices, provided that the act of recording does not interfere with the business of this public board meeting. Therefore, the board makes it known that any such recording is to be considered a private recording of the individual and in no manner represents the official record of this board. The board therefore takes no responsibility for such private recording and completely disavows any future use. Well, for silly. Here. Prima? Here. Dunn? Hopman? Here. Mongan? Here. Singh? Here. Zulikowski? Here. Weber? Here. Andriani? So here. Thank you. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Individual with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, according to our agenda, we will have a moment of silence at our regular meeting. Um, now we're at the pool of minutes. Does anybody have any comments about those before we move on? No, not at this time? Okay. Now moving along then section um, Roman numeral eight recognition. Take a look. Anybody? Um, Mr. Citizen, do you have anything to add to this? No, this one. Mm -hmm. I speak for themselves. I think we're very proud of uh, as part of over school district. Um, looking at athletics and an area that I've done at least for our staff. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Hopefully our student representative will be here that, that tonight. Superintendent's report, I will assume you have one. I will have one. It will be based upon just uh, to keep the board up to speed on the progress of our technology, confusion with the iPads, where we're at, where we need to go. Okay, thank you. Um, would we be having any speakers for any presentation? Uh, uh, just uh, this school speaker. Oh, you don't know if we from private school? Yeah. Um, I know what you said about the iPad, but there's a number of separations about it. But just a little feedback. Any kind of feedback on how it's going? Sure, we'll put that towards progress towards goals. I'll do a technology report if uh, um, Ms. Kibber, any information you want to give towards project towards the work? Well, we, we got confused last time, remember? I, I just wanted to see how the pilot was going. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I was there today. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. um, I'm going to find out by the next question. Is there any other questions? Okay. Special committee reports. Um, we will need to have a personnel committee meeting prior to this. And um, I, I apologize. I'm still, I still finally got some dates. And I'm working on that. I will email everyone. Um, a list of committee <coughs> of chairs and, and membership as we get uh, definitely by Thursday. Right, thank you. Um, facilities use. I will be giving a committee report. Okay. On sorry. the uh, policy. Okay. Uh, I'll be 
also given a committee report as well on strategic planning. Um, I'll be last month with uh, Mayor Henry. Uh, all the details from that update. I'll also give an update as far as how our community is. Okay. I have a question regarding um, policy and your strategic planning committee. I attended last time last committee meeting. And um, was it a board decision to ask the attorney to attend? I asked him to come to go over all of his, his policies because uh, he's a very, very critical policy for so evaluation of all the personnel. And for clarification purposes, I asked him to go over So, because of the nature of the yes. mandated, yes. so it's not every month? No, no, by no means. Uh, just curious. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any conflicts or confusions about facilities use? No. So moving along, we have hearing the residents on the agenda items only. Okay. I'd like to open that up if anybody has anything to say. I can count fast. One, two. Andrea, you have nothing to say. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't. Okay. Everybody look at it. I don't. Okay. How about alumni pathway? Anything to say? Yeah. 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 In the audience, you want to make sure you don't miss anyone? I have nothing. No. Else. Okay. I'm watching. Okay. Yeah, so anyone wants to like, we have a union president in the back. Do you have anything to add? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I take it you didn't see the whole government speech. But anyway. Oh, I um, saw it. <laughs> I actually heard it. I didn't oh, see it. I heard it. Okay. Right. Um, I guess we're at the policy at this point. Yeah, you discuss anything tonight with them? No. We'll call this, uh, Why does everyone have questions? Yes. It's not, Mr. Freeman. It's actually, if you look on the left in the illegibly tiny type, P it okay. says P and then R. Policies and regulations actually go back. Very good. Okay. Um, I'm going to go some for coaching positions. <coughs> and I know that I always ask whether or not they have the um, experience for that. We have, the, yeah, we have the asterisks, mm -hmm. multiple asterisks, and the three-time asterisks um, clarification system in place. We should be phasing out the three-time asterisks <laughs> because uh, we have not really been stated in any new positions. We are more full. This is the second cycle through. Number two is an adjustment, and number three, we have nobody resigning. Is that in the home area anticipation? You never know. Just as a question for all the ones who are coming in, uh, it's uh, with the single asterisk, which are out of district. Um, are these all certified teachers? Or, you know? They all have their certification. Know if, if there are any travel issues that we make, you know, you know, sometimes the added district coaches have a hard time getting there. Yeah. But a hard time for practice. I'm going to leave that to personnel to answer both of them. That hasn't been brought to my attention. Yeah, um, it, well, so historically, what right. has come up if somebody was a middle school teacher somewhere else and then comes to a middle school later, mm -hmm. transit time, you know, just for being nice enough. Oh, so you're talking about industry? Uh, oh, I think that's right. Out right. No, out district, out of district people coming in for. Well, we, well, I would hope that they would take the job with consideration that they can make it, they can, then they shouldn't take the position. Usually industry people, you know, we, we take a look at that as part of the deciding factors if they can be on time, if their schedule accommodates that. Is there anything anyone in particular that you noticed? No, there's five, there's five okay. people in our district. This was a generic question. Uh, we have a curriculum guide, number one, the curriculum guide, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number ten, number eleven, number twelve, number thirteen, number fourteen, number fifteen, number sixteen, number seventeen, number eighteen, number nineteen, number twenty, we have a bill list. 
that required a civil engineer, we would deal with the, engi the engineer of record. But this was a project that required architectural drawings to be submitted to the township for approval and permits, so we have to go that way. Using the engineer to do that is kind of in the wrong direction. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. But what I thought is that contracting with an engineer for whatever portion of the project required an engineer, that's what, uh, that's what put through my question. No, and, and Nancy, you have always, you know, um, experience with those and how this works, but uh, especially for Mr. Singh and some people that are new, you know, sometimes we have a clarification because the vocabulary or, or what is a little different. Now, Nancy has said that the way the invoice looked is that it, it seemed to suggest one thing and you're saying no. Is there a way we could clarify an invoice to be a little more specific? And what, what's included in the invoice is an analysis of what the charges are. <coughs> and the charges are for draftsmen. Uh, in this particular case, there was a topographical issue uh, in the parking lot where it sloped, so they need an engineer to do some type of study <coughs> involved with the project that has to be included in the project. So it is laid out in the invoice. If you pull out the first story, you can see the, the analysis of the, okay. with all its components. Okay. Separating this thing from the expense, uh, I just don't want to say that, that I want to have a little discussion about the actual work that's being done. Uh, so, and just to get an idea, particularly for this to say anything else. Mm -hmm. Did this project come off a, a, a five year capital list? Or Which project? The, the roof. So, the roof, the roof was something that was on the Long Range facility okay. plan. It's one of the projects that we submitted to the state for the rock grant which okay. we received, so that I believe the state would be reimbursing us for 40% of that project, but it had to be on the home facility. And the balance will be funded via? Capital Reserve. Okay. And um, I'm, I'm trying to recall, I know that they, they had some, some significant drainage issues that were there with that when they put in that new development in the back. That also, I mean, that repair work that had to take place now that's part of where the engine was required here, was that relative to anything that was done during that period of time, you know? What project are you talking about? The roof now? What? No, but you're talking about when, when he, he referred to. What, you to He's about talking about the high school. The fence oh, issues at the high school. Okay. You yeah. know, the, the, what Mrs. Bonner was talking about. Is in terms of security, right. the only no, place that. that school roof. I don't know about you. Right. The, um, well, we're, we're, talking about two, we're talking about two different projects. Okay. One that is something that Ms. Mommy is discussing that was discussed uh, <coughs> as a project to enhance the security of the high school. The soft roof thing. With the topical, you know, when we were speaking of the topical graphical uh, right. study, that was at Boulder High School. Um, oh, you're asking about, you're what you're asking about is the. Um, right. And is, now, I, and I know during the referendum that uh, I believe the portion of the roof at uh, what's now the Grade 9 Center was replaced where the uh, lab was put in, the new lab. I don't know if the other part of that roof was ever done. And since they were built the same year, I would assume they should be around the same time. Watch for replacing if it hasn't been done already. Do we know what the status is on? The I, I, I haven't experienced any of the complaints from uh, at least from Frank Vizier's office on leaks to the Grade Nine Center. Um, and I believe that was done to answer from the air conditioning. Yeah, yeah, but that was only there, right? that was only in the one right. the, the one section. I thought where they did the uh, where they redid the chemistry lab. Yes. There's only one section as far as I can recall. Yeah, yeah. I'm just curious as to where the other one is <coughs> in terms of time. I mean, it's not a finance question. Right. Well, we could ask Frank to take a look at that, Frank, if that's part of something we need to come back in a, a, a long range facility plan. Frank. How old is the Jones Soft Group? Did you know? Is there any history of police? Oh, amazing. Frank was in a. We've been packed. Uh, I'm only in the district since January, and we've already patched it two or three times since I've been here. Uh, and, he, and one of the first things was brought to my attention when I got it was that the roof was a major problem. So there's only one roof course, and I think in the county. Is it a localized structure? Because we can be from It's a $700,000 700, project, so I'm, I'm not sure if it's the entire roof, but it's probably a substantial part of it. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The capital expense. Mm -hmm. Do we have any substantial proof to change the roof that we need to, the case we don't right now? or? Yes. It, it, well, in addition, to, in addition to that, we were able to obtain 40% funding from the state mm -hmm. to do this project. So it's only going to, in effect, cost us 60%. Okay. 
Yeah, I think there's some certainly going to the ground to address the terms of the Bible and so on. Where, you know, the history of the, those couple of years, but the four versions that they had there. And I know the materials on those flat roots is really not very substantially right now. I think that a lot of the same thing that we're saying is getting better and better. No, I, I am sure, but you know, I talked to the architect prior to the project. I talked to the architect after the project. I talked to the architect, you know, when the bill came in, and he's assured me that it has not been marked up. So I, I am 99.9 percent sure that it has not been. Marked up. Okay, well, you're comfortable with that. We can certainly separate the opening if you want. And, and I will take the second Okay. So then at this point, there's a little discussion with them. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do finance, which is number one. Oh, do I have a motion? Thank you. Mr. Wasili, do I have a second? I'm going to have a second. Mike Wasili? Yes. Kramer? Yes. Hotman? Yes. Swanman? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulkowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. And Brownie? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The rest of the finance, does anybody have anything that they would like to discuss? Can you change it to phone number four, please? The, the, um, concession stand project cost the district one point six million two million dollars and is complete and we transferred money into the capital projects fund from capital reserve and under the regulations we're required to return to capital reserve any unused funds and that's the balance that's going back to the capital reserve. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Somebody explain the asterisk on number 16. Um, on number 16, they're just delineating that that particular person is a lead teacher. So that um, they work an additional, I believe it's a half, an hour and a half. Teacher C, um, the lead teacher, they're working an additional hour and a half. They're coordinating, um, doing some additional paperwork for that program. These are additional or they're replacing vans? These are replacing vans. That one one van is a 1999 Ford with 128,000 miles that breaks down almost every month. The other one is a 1996 Dodge van with 131,000 miles which breaks down almost every month. So, and we've worked out the ones that are Ford vans. Right, we've worked out the Denise bought them, so I kind of, I trust. Don't we have an award winning Ford Motors Club? Maybe they could have. Yeah, they should. Yeah, they should fix them. Are you going to sell those very soon? Or I don't know. Maybe I, I'm not sure. We have to know. Project, project, what we typically do with them at this point? I think that these keeps them in the back for, you know, like the buses in case she needs to cannibalize them for parts. If she can, because we have other buses of similar makes, so they're gone. Can I just, uh, going back, I'm sorry, number four on the supply equipment services. Yeah. Going, I guess, kind of what Frank was saying about the roof. I understand, you know, the previous place and all that. But, like, this is just my, my uh, still learning, I guess. If you would please replace your roof at home, call the roof and says it's X amount of dollars, and that's it. Why do we need an architect to give us a design service then also pay for the roof. Why isn't that? Because there's no way to know what the roof should should be unless an architect draws up the plans, submits the plans to the township to get a permit in order to do it. It's part of the process. You can't just you just can't replace a roof. Like on your house, if you have two roofs or three roofs, depending on where you are, you have to get a permit because you can't put another roof on top of it. So you may have to get some more. But in this particular case with a school, you don't want to build a roof that's not structurally sound without an architect uh, doing a project. And this is this is rock grant. This is also funded through, through the rock grant. So we look at reimbursing really percent of this. And we would not be able to get the rock grant unless we had an architect. Well, you know, I, I, again, I, same thing. We already have a little farm there, so there had to be drawings and or plans somewhere. Well, that's changed. Okay. All right. So, all right. So the specs are changing, right? Yeah. So then, okay. And according to to what I was reading through, we just sent out the sweet on it to me. That roof is so bad; they're they're actually taking that down to the frame yeah. and replacing the entire thing. So, and that's, that's, that's just said, you put a blue roof on your house. You can only put so many layers of roof before. Legally, and for insurance reasons, you have to repair it too often. The whole loop. And the issue here also is that the rock grant process opened up in June, and we applied for a number of grants for the state to fund us. So everybody in the world is out there looking for contractors to do new roofs and new projects in the world, so we want to get this on the market as fast as possible. Now, I've heard you use that term before, which is saying it's new to the board. Could you explain what the Rock, rock Grant is a regular operating district, ROD, regular operating district grant. 
and there, there are either four or five windows of opportunity over the last five or six years to submit facilities projects to the state where the state will uh, cover the cost, usually approximately 40% of the cost of the projects uh, where the district will get reimbursed. We advance the money and then the, uh, the state reimburses us. The state turns uh, it in, in some big word pool of money and we're going to get a piece of it, correct? That's correct. Yeah, yeah and just for if the board members weren't here, and uh, when the referendum went through, it was $8.6 billion put in that pool uh, for money. And we were one of the districts because we had the prepping for it all along. We were able to get in on the ground floor and we got it in on time and under budget. The contract is raised almost doubled in the five years, three or five years. And people who had approved things, I think this is what I'm who had approved projects, fell way short of money. There all kinds of problems all over the state. So that's an unfortunate happened. Well, we have 18 months to, to complete this project, but I would, I'd like to get it done over the summer. Yeah, that's ideal. Yeah. Presentation? Maybe that is wrong. I would think that is it. Some things that I think that are, are of a concern uh, to me, um, and it's not about the, the procedure. It's, it is communication with some of the bus drivers and the bus drivers. So but I don't have Denise here. We're going to be able to speak more of that. Okay. So I'd rather have a committee meeting by her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here. 
which many districts in the state do now. That was <coughs> three or four quality days back in November, but only to take no days out of that week, <coughs> as part of our three days anyway. Well, part of the, this Board of Education negotiated that the teachers would have three in service days and work 182 days. So, subject to whether that school day is open, they're still doing 182 days yeah. and they're still doing the three in service days. So, I have to put them somewhere. Okay. So, why not put an in service day in a day where the school will be more susceptible to it? In, in that, you know, inconsistencies and schools that still do have traffic problems are Sandburg, Memorial, Keysway, um, to speak to, you know, that Sandburg staff, there's no, we have to provide for extra parking. On um, the larger election day, which you allude to, nobody really shows up for the primaries. It's the smaller turnout. For the November day, it's a bigger turnout. So it does create more of a problem on those days, and that's why that day is considered. Um, like I said, we still have to get teachers contractually three and service days. I could load them all in the front, but that doesn't do anything as far as the Teach New Jersey Act, which requires us to you know, in service them over the course of the year. We have to do in service for them in October, because October 15th is the deadline for the SGO approval process under Teach New Jersey. And then going forward for another one, um, that's why we made the decision looking at it that that is an opportunity for an in service stage and still um, not impacting the 182 days, which we do here, which are two days more than the minimum requirement that Governor Christie spoke to. Well, still just going back to the November election day, I mean, I'm old, and when my kids were in school, my children went to exhibit, school was open those three days. And I know the world has changed in security, but I think we have, you know, if it's only one school, Sandberg, if there's a parking issue, I think for that one day, maybe some accommodation could be made. Memorial Engine. 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 Memorial
they didn't change it. Okay, so it makes it easier for them as far as uh, November is concerned. There are, there's an abundance of people that are going to be in there. So I would think it would be to our advantage to leave the school closed. Okay, and in June, you're right. The education is limited because it is June. It is the end of the year. And they don't have as many people that come out to the primary. You're absolutely right. And I know that you have to give them the free and service days also. I, I think the one thing that really makes it a big debate is the fact that because of the way the week falls now with, with the uh, convention on Thursday and Friday, you close on those days. So you're open on Monday, you're out on Tuesday, you're in on Wednesday, and then that makes that somewhat of an invaluable educational week, right? Now all of a sudden, a whole week of November has turned into a lot of the students are not even showing up because they're down to the and whatnot, so the teachers maybe will not feel that they should be covering as much detail as they should because they So to Frank's point on the, the in-service days or providing something, you know, on, on those days as well, I think, um, and then being able to kind of move up the schedule, you know, I think what, uh, uh, I mean, it, you're saying it, it was okay because the turnout is less, but you still have the same situation with lunch. That's your lunch. Right. So, so my point being, the only thing that's different between November and April is the logistics by, based on the volume. And I, I don't think Cheesequake is reconfigured, it's reconfigured differently. The firehouse parking lot of the first day squad is available probably to staff members, which would allow plenty of voters to get in and out. I don't think Cheesequake is a problem. I, don't, I can't address the other school. I mean, I know what the world looks like, and I know it's got limited access. But beyond that, it's a difference in logistics because if one case here, it can't not be a security issue in April when you have the facility open and you still have a flow of people coming in and being a security issue in November. It's inconsistent. I mean, the logic doesn't fly. Well, that's well, it's, it's like saying that, you know, that New York City open on Saturday and it's open on Monday, but it's still open. It's a security risk. Well, there's a greater security risk when there's a more greater volume of people coming in. And you've seen increased volume. Yeah, I, I, don't know that, I don't know if that's a true fact. The presumption is that crazy is drove by a percent of the population. This takes one. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know that's at all. My, uh, just to give a history about this, it wasn't done in isolation. So it was done with the instructional council. Parents from the community were invited to the meeting and then was worked with the strategic plan. And the, the mindset is that that is a week, or designated as a week of in-service for staff professional development. So why not, if you're going to do it there, then have that week be designated for that. And that's why, um, at that point of November the uh, 4th, the election day, being another time mm -hmm. to tie in and continue with that theme of professional development. Again, stating that we have to have risk and increase. And sure, the volume does increase for that election. And not only is a parking concern, not only is security concern, but it increases at that time. And I will tell you as superintendent of schools, you'll always have a, during the primaries, I will always put a police officer in the school, so I'm not going to be the person who says, I didn't do it, and something happened. When we did have the primaries prior to the special election, there were members of the community in three different schools found in areas where they're not supposed to be, including a child bathroom. Uh, it does raise a concern. And if the pundits are that concerned about it, I challenge them to get them out of the schools. <coughs> that the in the schools. If everybody's so worried about the continuity of education, then they should find places to put these elections. Because <coughs> the children aren't voting. The largest set of problems that are owned by the whole municipal government, not just the schools. There are schools that are owned by the township. Why don't they vote? Uh, question parents vote up. Why don't they vote on Saturday? And, and Everybody's off from work. It's a great time to get out and vote. Parents vote up. I just thought it was, it was a good question. Yeah, and the expense you save on the April elections are actually going to be so that's a lot. Well, been looking to have a little more continuity of education in that November week when we close. Well, so let, me, let me kind of back up. Right. I'm, I'm looking for that as a fail safe mm -hmm. because when we added the extra instructional things on several years ago, in 2009, that pushed us further into June and then further away from when the ESS, further away from when the 
So, uh, you know, well, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. just to address the October 13th, we, we did talk about that day and whether we were here this year. And well, it's in the calendar. Right. Well, we were in school this year. Yeah. Um, but we were taking it out next year because it is a significant day for professional development in relationship to the SGOs that have to be completed. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have that time this year, and it, it was truly missed. So we did feel that that particular day, that timing, right. was very important. No, I think that's a great thing. Maybe you misunderstood me. I said, what about if we opened um, on the 4th of November and you needed another in-service day, what about January 19th? But again, it's, it's so much further into the year that those No, in addition to the 13th, because you'd be losing the 4th as an in-service day, correct? If we open school? So mm -hmm. okay. you were saying to take no, the 13th. No, no, oh no, I wasn't. Even mm -hmm. the 4th, the timing of it at the beginning of the year, and, and we talked about these immediately before the kids come back. Um, there, there's a lot that's going on in the schools that need to take place, but we need to have the professional development throughout the year, not all up front, not at the end, right. but pace, because there's you have to be able to touch the right. right. yeah. professional development in September and October, and then November, so it's all in the beginning of the year. I said, why can't we be open November 4th and have it January 19th? That was just, you know, my question. Mm -hmm. As, as a, a, a bridge between people in education and people who are not, um, and we've referenced the governor a couple of times in the state of New Jersey, we have a new set of evaluation procedures. And uh, Dr. Hopper has thrown out words like SGO and, and, and percentiles and things of that nature. And a lot of that is front loaded into the beginning of the year. Um, all the teachers' evaluations are you now based upon <coughs> their indicators, their uh, student growth objectives, and there is a lot of pre planning and work on their assessment and the evaluation, the pre and post test case that goes into that. And <coughs> the deadlines are in the first marking period, uh, right into the early part of, of November. So the timeliness of that I, c I can understand. But again, um, this the thing, I don't know if you know what an SGO is, I'm, I'm not quite sure. So I'm trying to make sure that we, you know, we get clarification. So those are the things we'll sure, again. Those are the things that we sat in collaboration with the community of teachers, educators, principals, supervisors, uh, parents from the community as well. We talked about those things initially. The problems we had this year were the SGOs. The SGOs, which are the student growth objectives, are, are due uh, to the state uh, for the 15th of November this year. Next year, they moved to October. And you can't really speak to that nature when you're coming in the first day of school. You're trying to go through all the new initiatives, everything that everyone has to do with their logins and, and so forth. The first and service day is getting everyone up to speed on everything they need to keep up the school year. And then you, you at the end of the mid August, you have that student data comes into the, ten, to the district. We have to extrapolate that data, take it apart, and use that data. So by November, we've passed that data out to the staff so they can really individualize the instructional goals for the students. And that was the goal for the mid-November, that November break. So we then, because if you do it in January, you have to have students for only half a year. Now you're looking at really extrapolating the test scores and taking out what areas where they did well or did not do well uh, based upon the previous year's scores and have plans for them throughout the course of the year. That's why you, you want to have them in November. That's why we put November. That's why we put October for the SGO plan. And we put one in, in September. Ideal, I'd like to have six days. But oh, I mean, like, so you have to go somewhere. All right, we're going to move These on. The calendar, is, I mean, the calendar is the calendar, and we can discuss it more at length. If you have any other issues or anything you want to say, drop uh, an email off to. Well, yeah, again, I, 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 just think, I mean, in summary, I know there's, there's a lot of masters you're serving. You know, obviously, you have a certain state, Department of Education. But at the same time, uh, it would seem, I mean, at least a 10 or 20 year history of scoring around the world, whoever's rubric is, and assuming whoever applies the rubric to the other countries applies to the U.S. as well. Uh, we appear we appear not to be doing as well uh, as we were. Although we're doing better than we were, we're not, we've lost position in where we were 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, with that said, and with 
the NAS initiative for more time on tasks and every day and all these days. Whether it'll get through or not remains to be seen, but we're still waiting for a full day for the kindergarten and get that as today. I did. So, do you know if you extrapolate in New Jersey, we're actually in the top five around the world? We're just in New Jersey compared to the rest of the countries? Uh, yeah, and, and Massachusetts is two states ahead of us, number three, and, and we're number seven on that. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to speak to the broader picture of that. We have, I think we have enough, you know, there are countries that go between 190 and 220 days in a country like Germany, so we're all over the lot. And there are countries that don't have the multicultural ethnic societies that we do, in, like Finland, who do very well with less. So there are, there are a tremendous number of variables and I appreciate all of those. But having said that, at the end of the day, it seems that uh, there need, really needs to be some concerted effort by all parties to state government, teachers, and your parents, to, I think, understand it, to try and get as much quality education before it gets heated away in general. And if, it, if that means truncating with some of the, uh, some of the breaks that we have now, uh, we are the old employee education, not the recommendation. Um, does anybody else want to weigh in? Uh, please please. Sure. Okay. 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 Um, we can. Um, the regional services is in county, so that that will not change. So we are the way in the Mills Lukowski has um, graciously uh, agreed to continue in that vein. That's a very um, the meetings of that are on Fridays. I know that when I was speaking to the board members, uh, I did ask them about flexibility in their schedules. And they think about Friday mornings once a month. So we have to be somebody who's able to, to get out of court. So we have to do it last year, and we want to do that again. So we, you know, we'll, we'll talk at a later date about an alternate if we need one. But the inspiration is going to continue. So it will be our representative. Board Secretary, Board Business. Okay. Any other residents? Any additional I just I just had a question on uh, page six under curriculum number one, English language arts. I'm just wondering if somebody could provide clarification of the process for the procedure for staff members submitting curriculum and being compensated. The contractual item, I know we had some issues in the past with posting that was corrected. They were posted, but these curriculum guides were completed over the summer. Staff has, hasn't been compensated, and I see they're just being approved in January. So I'm not sure where they, where they, where they were. I can respond to that. Uh, the curriculum guide is submitted to uh, the supervisor for the, uh, the particular curriculum area. They then review the curriculum and go back and make, um, meet with the members. If there's any changes that need to be made, they have to be uh, formatted and so forth. And sometimes, depending upon the curriculum, this is a, a large curriculum, the English 9 through 12 curriculum. And, um, you know, sometimes it just takes a little bit longer. and due to the other responsibilities that the supervisors do have. This particular supervisor chairs two major departments, and the people are being paid. I believe they are on the uh, agenda. But we will on this agenda or the next on, on the January's agenda? They'll get paid in the, jam, the, June, the January 30th paycheck. Paycheck. Just for clarification, your question was about Payment, uh, payment for the service? No, no, my question is just about where, where it's been. I mean, curriculum, I, like, it was done in the summertime, so, that, you know, that these, they were posted, staff put in, they were recipients and received that, you know, to do the writing. They did the writing over the summer. I'm not sure why it takes six months for, to, to review and then to still be waiting for it to be on agenda. Now it's on that agenda in January. My concern is the curriculum, September, October, November, December, and January hasn't been approved, nor they can't be compensated until this has been approved. 
So I'm not sure if the process, you know, it, it, I know it was a large curriculum, but my fear is that that deters staff members from being involved because it becomes kind of a lengthy process. So right. I just curriculum writing is a lengthy process, um, Nicole. And unfortunately, this is a very large curriculum, and it was a new format that we were using also this year, you know, with um, aligning it to the Common Core as well as to the model curriculum. So there was a lot involved in this curriculum guide, but we're certainly, you know, eager to move it in a more timely manner. But I can't pay people until the board approves the curriculum guide too. So, you know, it, it's a process. People will be paid. We have to look upon this money in the bank sometimes. So, I know I understand, but, you know, saying that a supervisor is responsible for two departments, that, that wasn't our decision. No, nor, no. Nor am I sure it was the right decision, but, right. you know, but, I just but don't want But these are the constraints that we operate under, you know, and, you know, but we will certainly address, you know, your concerns in the future and try to move it in a more timely manner. Okay. Well, I have, I have a question now because you said it's six months. When, when were the curriculum, when was this written? If you said over the summer, that's 10 weeks. It was so started over the summer. So, oh, so when was it submitted? In August? I would have to go back and check that. So I mean, in reality, it may not be six months, it may only be four, or, or three and a half. And then take time for the supervisor okay. to uh, review the depth of that curriculum. It's back. not, it may not have been submitted July 5th. It may have been submitted August 18th. Uh, so. All right. I just clarification. No, no, it's not necessary. Just when, when you hear something like six months, you know, wait, that seems to be a long time. But in reality, that may not have been um, the actual timeline. Okay. All right. Um, anyone else? I'll just I'll just comment on the calendar because okay. I, I I know it's been an ongoing issue for years. Being well, here. Well, wait one second. We have um, this is the county for years has asked for. Uh, us to be taped. We've moved, we've moved our venue from one place to another. And you're in the back of the camera, so I, I don't know if you wish to come up. So no, I'm okay here. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know where the gentleman can swing camera. the camera around. But maybe since you're, you know, <laughs> that would be like a close viable, <laughs> But would you at least I um, identify <laughs> yourself verbally for anybody who is listening? Nicole Saladino, president of the Old Bridge Education Association. So I just weigh in on the calendar because I know it's been a hot topic. First of all, the association certainly recognizes that it's a non-negotiable item. I know Mr. Weber has been part of bargaining, um, you know, several times, and one of the issues was in the 2009 that we did give back two days. Um, and miraculously, after that, we always had inclement weather, and when PD was moved to the back end and so forth, kind of thing. It was a day sometimes that we didn't actually work because it was given back due to people didn't want spring break and that kind of thing. So I know it's a hot topic, but it was a collaborative effort between the Instructional Council, which is made up of five administrators as well as five certificated staff, and there were some parents there and so forth. I don't think it'll ever be perfect because there will always be somebody who wants something different. Um, you know, that years that I worked here, for 10 or plus years prior, you know, it was, we always had the insert on Tuesday election day. Prior to any of these security issues, we always, it was Monday, Wednesday, you know, and it was consistent. Then we got off tangent and became cruise week, and we were closed for that, you know, that month, and it definitely was not, you know, an educationally sound week, because it is important prior to all the testing mandates that come in the spring. So, Although I know it's not perfect, the other issue is in June, having the PD at the end last year was completely, I think, ineffective. So by that point, the teachers had checked out, graduation had occurred, you know, and, and it just was not effective. Um, we tried to do two uh, up front in last instructional council. We tried to move two PD days into September. That didn't, that didn't work well. We tried half days. There was a lot of issues that have been addressed over the years. The concern is between, you know, kindergarten, technology, SGOs, real time, lesson plans, like everything that has been changed and mandated, it's really our teachers need PD more than anything. And it's probably the area where we have lacked on in years because they need resources and to be trained properly. And I think, although I agree, Frank, it might not be perfect, I think it was a step in the right direction to get back to that November piece, coming back to work in November. Last year was kind of that first year, teachers, you know, staff with our students were out. Now I feel like we're getting back on track now where 
staff didn't have to be here last election, but now they do. So now it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It does provide more consistency. I'm just putting it out there. And in reference to the governor's message today, although his child goes 163 days in the private school, um, you know, I don't think that it's lengthening the school year, it's being more effective. And we have other areas that we should be focusing on right now, such as math, which I totally agree with you. In the middle school level, I know we addressed the elementary with the new program that was brought in. Um, we had the Algebra 1 exam for two years and the state took it out because it wasn't effective. We're still running the biology, it doesn't exist, there's no score for it. So, you know, although I said it's not perfect, it was a collaborative effort. It does, and I get the elementary calls all June long that it's too hot, they bring the second floor kids down to the first floor. So, like I said, I think it's a collaborative effort. I understand the November piece, but I think it's a step in the right direction. The teachers do need the PD spaced out, but they do need it kind of in the front end as opposed to. When we moved it to like February for long president's weekend, we did the PD, it got taken back because of inclement weather. So we negotiated something so that everybody was satisfied. So it didn't really get utilized. So I think kind of putting in the front end was, was the reason behind that. So, like I said, I know it's non-negotiable, Believe me, some of the staff is not happy about that, you know, but I know some of the parents will be happy, some of the staff, but like I said, I think it was a, a conscious effort to improve the instruction and, 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 you know, and the PD for the staff because it's an area where, you know, where, where they really do need training. All right. Thank you for your comments. Okay. We're down to the end of looking around. Is there anybody else that has any comments? <laughs> I don't know if we need to do the order on the agenda meeting, but if there are any board members that, that want to have, have anything they want to want to contribute, I'd just like to welcome the board members to their first working session. <laughs> And this was a short one, comparatively, so don't, 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 don't think you're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the room worked that well. I, I, it's easier to speak to each other than to the table than shouting across the library. Okay, so then we need a motion to adjourn. Come on. All right, Mr. Weber. Ms. Mom, all in favor? Aye. Aye, 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 aye. Okay, thank you. You left out. Uh -huh. <laughs>